Um, hello, everyone. It's it's 10 a.m. So if I pass out, uh, it's because it's 10 a.m. Um, so oh, I have to stand, standing and talking. All right. So why would love to talk about Mandy more at length? I fear that's another talk uh, in another conference. Uh, today, instead, I'll be talking to you about me, and you're thinking, man, you really left out. Um, a bit about me. My name is Steve Cha, uh, and sometimes I make games. Currently, professionally, I work at an, an awesome indie studio uh, in the production department, where I mess up on a lot of emails. Um, but I also recently finished my MFA here at USC. And during my final year at USC, I made a little game called Revisions. Uh, it's a metafictional piece by Steve Cha that boxes me. And I'll be speaking to you about how I learned about games as identity performance in the aftermath of developing it. Uh, let's see what my slides have in store for me. OK, here's a table of contents. I put it here to show you that I'm an organized person. So I'm going to describe to you what I made uh, in the post more part is I'm going to describe to you how I felt and kind of learned about things in the aftermath. And that's going to segue into the a lovely surprise about what is drag and why, and why does game design kind of have similarities with drag. Any questions about that? You all look puzzled or asleep. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take that as asleep because I'm super clear. Here's another <laughs> slide uh, where I'm about to talk. This slide tells you that I'm about to talk to you about what I'm about to talk about. Which is, um, so I made a game that you guys, has anyone played Revisions by any chance? All right, please look to the people who raise their hand. They are arbiters of great taste. <laughs> and in case you haven't played it, one, I'll show you some clips later, but I'm going to read this out loud for you uh, for whatever reason. Revisions is an autobiographical series of vignettes that players play and replay to experience the subject's life and the subject's understanding of said events which is the most clinical description I've ever written, uh, which is why these clips are going to help in a little bit. Um, and it's, it's, it aspires to be all these things. It's like Stanley Parable and Butterfly, Annie Hall, Dysphoria. Not quite as good as any of them. I learned very quickly that if you compare yourself to any of these pieces, people are going to have very high expectations. Uh, so <laughs> I promptly remind them that I'm not quite as good as them yet. Yet. And actually, let me see if this works. I'm going to just play a clip for you to kind of demonstrate how this game works. And I'm going to play facing, like, this is going to be really difficult because there we go. OK. So this is, this is, that's me in an orange shirt, much lighter than I am today. OK. And so each vignette plays kind of like in the, the vein of dysphoria, where it's a small, a uh, micro game about an instance in my life where hopefully the mechanic mirrors and ex uh, expresses uh, what I felt in those moments. So in this, in this particular vignette, it's, about, it's a mini game about translating into Korean how difficult that is as a child. It's difficult as an adult too, but uh, so, it's dem so the mechanic here is you want to kind of click on the letters before, I can't even see my mouse. There we go, and try to translate things. It's extra fun when people don't actually know Korean. Uh, and the overall thing is that, uh, what I'm trying to express here is that uh, as a child, this is difficult and it gets really overwhelming very quickly. Uh, mom and dad jump up and down, and that's how the first half of the, the game goes. You play like five of these vignettes. Uh, and then, I hated it. But then, uh, something happens in the middle of the game uh, where there's a plot twist, because everyone loves a plot twist, and you realize that you get a chance to play these memories again. So everything that is in 2D is life as you know it. You know, it's when you experience it. But when you look back, you have depth, right? And so what do you do when you add depth to a 2D memory? You get something in 3D. So hold on. Am I on the right? I can't see. I can't. Hold on. Uh, tell me when the glasses start to swirl. You're in the upper left right. now. Yeah. I'm in the upper left. Right. Yeah, right. Here we go. Yep. And then you get something like, here we go. Wait, that's not how it's, it's not supposed to look. Here we go. It's, gonna, it's going to work for real now. OK. So everything that was 2D becomes 3D, and you see dimensions that were hidden to the player before. So much like when you realize, hey, why did mom disappear dur during those weeks? Oh, she was having a midlife crisis and needed to find herself. 
you know, and then you find little notes. I won't bore you with all the details, but I really like post-its. And so this is, this is the crux of the game. This is the, the main mechanic of ca trying to capture that feeling of looking back at your own memories and finding kind of solace in uh, seeing why trauma has happened. It's, you're not changing it, but you are having a revision. You're seeing, uh, you're having a vi different vision of it. So that, that's why it's called revisions. And you're all supposed to be like, wow, by how clever that is. <laughs> uh, but I find that no one actually is. Um, I just stuck with it because the alternative names were terrible. Okay, so back to this. And so that's how uh, the game flows like that. You play five vignettes, uh, you have a midpoint narrative uh, reveal, and then you replay everything, and then you get the best ending ever. So how did, how did you feel, Steve, when all this happened? Well, um, I realized that uh, at USC what they teach you, <laughs> Well, they don't actually officially teach you, but what I learned at USC is that there is no greater honor or no greater like mark of accomplishment than to show your student game at Indicade. And so I began submitting uh, my game to various places in search of validation and attention. A really good pattern. Um, and so, it, it, sorry, I, I heard something, but the struggle is real. I still don't have enough validation or attention. Um, even as I sit, sit up here. Um, but sorry, I digress. Um, so I watch a lot of people play my game. And it's very odd watching people play you uh, as you watch them play you. And then they come up to you afterwards. And I, I believe most people are being sincere. Um, because when people say nice things to me, I believe them. But I also experience this really odd sense of... Uh, of guilt. I think the word is guilt. Uh, it's this uh, sense that you owe them something, but at the same time you feel like you've deceived them in some way. And that's when I realized, when I was give, showing this game, that I was in, I'm in drag. And because you all got up at 10, you get to see me in really bad drag. Um, that on the left is a Snuggie. <laughs> <laughs> that on the right is my attempt at a Family Guy character. <laughs> It, it, did, it didn't work out. So I was in drag, um, but in, in a digital way. So not literally in drag. Um, does anyone here watch Drag Race or are familiar with Drag Race? Okay, because I'm about to show you. A pic so what is drag, right? Um, what do you mean, Steve, you were in drag when you showed the game? I wasn't actually in like hair and makeup, uh, I, but this is what you usually think of drag, right? Uh, so drag is usually uh, usually refers to drag queens, and drag queens tend to be uh, gay cisgender men performing uh, in like, uh, as presenting in a, in, as women. So there is a major distinction between you know, uh, drag queens and trans women, but that is a talk that one, I'm not qualified to give, and two, desires, there's a lot more attention. But this isn't the type of drag I'm talking about. Because drag has a lot of different meanings, uh, and it can be kind of an umbrella term, because umbrellas are great. Uh, so case in point, the question is, what's a faux queen? Does anyone know what a faux queen is? OK, because I looked it up on Wikipedia yesterday, so I can tell you what it is. <laughs> uh, a faux queen is when a cisgender woman performs in the aesthetic of a drag queen. So it's like the gender performance of a gender performance. And you're probably wondering, Steve, aren't you going off track? How, this is, how does this relate to your game? Um, so what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make here is that I'm going to make up a definition. Drag is anything that is intentional, exaggerated performance of identity. Uh, it's usually dealing with gender, but because intersectionality is in, uh, you can't ignore other things like race, class. What are the other isms? Uh, sad them out. Okay, it's too early for that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but the main point I'm trying to make is that drag is about performance of identity, and I was performing an identity for people by designing a game about myself. Okay, design is drag. So in the next two sections, I'm going to quickly go over some of uh, the draggiest parts of it all. So I think there are two ways I perform drag. One, I perform drag by giving the player a very specific, curated, exaggerated version of myself. 
So I'll talk about the character avatar and how uh, that character is a bit draggy and how I made those decisions. And secondly, I'll be talking about the game itself and how the game uh, is essentially a dra in drag itself because it perform it it mimics games very intentionally and then points it out. And so I'll be talking about those two points. So first, this is me again. Uh, so when I when we came up with this avatar, let me tell you, there is no better way to figure out how people view you than to ask them to draw a picture of you. And so I had some artist friends who were on my team, and so we went through some initial concept of pieces of what I looked like. And so uh, how is this drag? One, my eyes don't look like that. So the first drafts of my eye were eyes were <laughs> sadly almost like looked like uh, certain caricatures of Asian people that you see. So I certainly didn't want to make myself have uh, bigger eyes, and I made it a point to have other characters in the game have bigger eyes, but rather than lines, I opted for dots. But I don't have dots for eyes. Uh, skin color, I'm not that highly saturated yellow, and this was probably the most intentional part of my being, which is like uh, people characterize uh, East Asian people as yellow, and uh, because I do touch on it, I wanted to kind of like play into certain uh, like existing codified things just to really get it clear to them that I'm really Asian. I mean, I don't know if there are degrees of Asianness. I don't think there are. I think it's more of a yes or no, but um, that, that's another talk at another conference. Expressions. So when we went through a series of animations, they don't vary too much from this. I come off as sassy. Uh, I have, I, you see a lot of animations where I'm flailing my arms excitedly. But what you don't see is you don't see an expression of, there's no dedicated uh, sad moment. There's no expression where I look defeated. And so that kind of, I did it because I think it's easier to, for the player to digest a, a lot of this information if it doesn't come off as too, too somber. But uh, in real life, I definitely have somber moments, usually at 4 a.m after a few drinks. Um, and the shape, I'm clearly not a square. The reason I did this was because because a game relies so heavily on perspective tricks, I, my main art direction, uh, like focal point, was that everything should be a bold, simple shape so that's easier to play with outlines and whatnot. Uh, and lastly, we can't, do the, uh, we can't see here is that I, I voice all the sound effects uh, and uh, all the voices in the game itself including myself, and I don't know if you guys ever do this, but when I refer, when I uh, am referring to myself or referring to something I said in the past, I tend to raise my voice because in my, I think I sound like a chipmunk to everyone, so I'm like, yeah, Charlie, uh, uh, I, was, I was talking to so-and-so, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> so, um, so I do that weird layer of filtering and, and like dragging up my voice as I perform myself, and that recording session was awkward but hilarious. <laughs> uh, and so these are some of the ways that I, uh, the character itself is a drag version of me. It's a, it's a sassier, slightly more confident, highly, uh, a lot, a lot more yellow than I am. Uh, but those are some of the decisions I made as I put on the makeup of digital drag. Uh, and another point is how is this game drag? So is anyone here familiar with the concept of camp? Concept, okay, uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page and because I want to sound smart. Uh, the definition of camp we're using is an exaggeration of any genre traits uh, to play to the effect of satire. Uh, and so because this game has a lot of metafictional elements, it's kind of hard to avoid camp. And I, for m the better part of the game, I think I, I embrace it. So some ways that we will exaggerate game genre stuff is like in this game, uh, I mix metaphors with UI, uh, with game UI and gamification, which I think elevates how, uh, shows how ridiculous some game gamification elements tend to be. For example, um, it's a racing game when you're racing towards this thing called happiness in the background, oh, uh, and there are references to drugs and sex. Um, content warning, drugs and sex, and narcissism. Um, but in the lower right corner is like a little speed bar uh, that shows you how fast you're hurtling towards happiness. Uh, and it usually happens after you take a power up in the shape of a pill. So by mixing heavy-handed metaphors with game elements, I think that's, I think that's pretty campy. Would you all agree? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I tried, I tried. Jedi power is not working. Um, 
And then ultimately, I think the biggest drag is the fact that this is, I mean, there are different definitions of what a game is, but I'd like to think that a lot of people would look at my game and say, it's not a game, it's, a, it's an interac interactive story. Uh, but it's an interactive story masquerading in drag as a game. And this is where I, I'm supposed to come up with a major like moment of epiphany, right? Uh, but I'm just uh, of my own choosing. But I'm just going to refer to, to RuPaul in closing. Uh, yes, I know that this is fairly broad. There is a chance that I am stretching certain concepts to make sure that I get a speaking spot at QGCon so I can, you know, sit like uh, stand like this in front of you. But I also like to think that what's really important is that drag is an all um, encompassing concept. As RuPaul says, you know, you're born and the rest is drag, and then. This is me trying to make, uh, trying to push that uh, sort of self-expression into digital games. Thank you.